Bernice Davidson, Davidson Associates. Promotional ideas and products. And this is your card, and you've got a number of things here screen printing, embroidering, over 850,000 promotional products, customer souvenirs, overseas sourcing, casino promotions, complete business printing, graphic art services, and much, much more. You have a couple of designers, and with emphasis on medical marketing. And you said recently you're getting into city, city county, and state municipal. governments. And, and, that's, and that's totally. That's a totally different area, and most of the time it hasn't even really been promotional products. The only time that I actually was given the opportunity to do a promotional product was I received a call from Conservation, and it was regarding a turtle, Mojave Max, which I guess most of you yes, probably know from that. school, mm -hmm. and they were looking for some things to give students, school, I guess elementary and junior high, but mostly elementary school students, when they take them on a tour of the desert and show them the tortoise. And since there isn't a lot of construction right now, see at one time their efforts would have gone to the construction companies, but now they're going to the students. And so what we did for that, to find something that would hold the, trip, hold the attention of the students, something that they would <clears throat> hold on to, because that's the most important part of the whole thing, we found a, a package of mints that on the front you could put a full color decal, which is what the company did, and we used Mojave Max on the front. And on the back, you could see through it, and it was a maze, like a little puzzle. So in order yeah. to get the mint out, you had to move the, uh, the container, which was a flat round container, so there was an entertainment value. So you know that they're probably going to hold on to it for quite a while. It wasn't impossible to get the mints out, but it took a little, it took a little doing. So it was a cute little promotion that the kids, um, kids would like. Now in that case, in regards to the graphics, the graphics were given to me by the conservation department and the only thing that we had to do since it was round is to put the art in the right, in the right uh, format in the area that it was going to be printed on. It was pretty much a production setup. It, but pretty much 90% of design. the time, 90% of the time, it's going to be production. I do paper printing, and I have the capability of designing logos. I really am not asked to design a logo. People may come to me and say, design my business card. And it might be done in you know, a funky font or, font or the colors of it or whatever, but we don't actually design their logo. They never ask us to design the logo. I have never been asked and we just don't. We just don't do it. We could. They give you a logo, right? Or just yeah, orders. you know. But the the yeah. cost of doing a logo to a lot of startups is very is very expensive. Now we don't necessarily have to charge as much as a graphic design house would charge because we're going to get the product. We're going to do all the printing afterwards, and that basically is where our our profit is going to come into. And we do mention it. I'm in a funny industry. Most people think of promotional products companies or salespeople as ballpoint pen salesmen. And you can go on the internet, you can find a hundred companies, they all have on their website a sourcing tool. And you can, you know, a company can waste their time looking for all these different things and a lot do, and then they'll come to me and say, I want this, I want that. Depending upon the company and the vibe that I get when I speak to them, my answer to them is yes, I will look at the items that they're looking at, but I want to evaluate if those are the right items. Because they go because that's pretty or everybody else is doing it, and so we're going to do it. So when, that, you know, when we go to a company and they just ask for something, I need something, my trade show is in four days, I don't have anything, and usually the answer is one of the questions that I will ask them when it's this kind of a situation is, are you doing this because everybody else who's going to be at the show has a giveaway? And if that, that's their only hmm. reason for doing it, I want to talk to them about rethinking that and possibly going to that show without anything and getting information and perhaps mailing something to people afterwards because promotional products are very, very strong, but a lot of people don't get it. They don't know how to use the promotion. They don't know how to use it. They don't understand that every time that somebody looks at your logo, it's a little, the cash register is ringing. Ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. So you have to have your logo out there. You have to have your logo and company name 
out there, preferably in full color, which is something else I will talk about, or preferably in the colors of your logo as opposed to printing it only in one color, and which generally speaking is going to be black, because on most items that will, you know, that's right. what it would require would be black. Or it could be just a single red. Or, or it could, but the thing else. is you have to understand that you want to show your logo in the best of all possible worlds. So if it means an extra $100 to do it, then spend the $100. If you see it as a cost, then you shouldn't do it. Let me explain what I mean about that. Everything has a price. Doing promotional items, in reality, if they give you a return on your investment, there is no cost. There is a price that you have to pay for them. Price and cost are two different things. You're talking value. We're talking value because even you, as graphic designers, when you go to see somebody, they go, oh my God, it's going to cost me so much to do my logo. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> to do my logo, that's where you have to, that's where you have to explain to them <coughs> that what you're charging them is part of the integral part of their doing business. It's not really costing them anything. It's using that logo to your best advantage. And you also have to explain to them that just having a business card or just having a ballpoint pen in and of itself is not going to be enough. But it's the start. It's you know it's the bricks. You're supporting. You're support. You're giving them the mortar. You're giving them the foundation of what they need to have. And it is their responsibility once they start their company or once they, you know, whatever it is, if they're rebranding, if they're doing it for the first time, that they have to give, they, they give the mortar. And what is the mortar? And this is, you know, an example of branding. The mortar is how they run their business. What are their ethics? What are their turnaround times? What are the ways that they conduct themselves? What is their customer service like? The brand is nothing more than a brand. So let's look back like, to the first time they used branding, let's say on cattle, that's something that we have heard of. So yes, the cattle ranchers put their brand on the cattle. So their mark. They, their mark, so they could identify their cattle. But in later years, when you came, let's say, to buy, buy cattle for slaughter, and you know that one ranch was doing better than another, you would look for their mark on the cattle, and that would be the cow that you would buy for slaughter because it had you know that they were treated in a certain way they were fed in a certain way and they were brought to market at a certain time which was the exact right time to bring them to market so you know the brand really started at things you know probably even before that probably in ancient egypt in some in some way um, yeah it would be like the chinese had a chop which was your name. And when you saw that chop, you knew that it was coming from a certain family that might have had a certain business, whether it was rice or something like that. And you knew that you were getting a quality product because they had a reputation of a quality product. And so then today we see it in a different way. And if you look at logos, because this is really important, the outstanding logos, look at Kellogg's, look at Nike, look at McDonald's and look and see what they did. They kept it down to the least amount of colors. Now, did they do that intentionally? I'm not really sure. But one of the things that's so important when we do a project for a client, it would be great if we could do it, if the logo had 16 colors, if we could do it in full color, but it adds a great amount of money to the end product, and many companies are just not willing to do it. And it really doesn't add more value or more recognition. No, it doesn't. And it's probably one of my pet peeves when I get a logo that is 16 different colors. And I brought some samples of um, primarily screen printing to look at some logos and understand the challenges that the company faced when they um, came up with a logo like this. So I'm going to show you one to start off. Here, hold it up there. Yeah. I'll zoom in here, okay. Okay, this is, is a logo. Orchard Center, Lake, okay. Island Lake, okay. Okay. This is a logo from, that is, that is uh, belongs to a summer camp in Pennsylvania. And it is a very unique place. And so all the things that they give their campers during the summer, generally speaking, are very unique. Now, this isn't very unique, but this is the first first um, 
shirt that, they, that the campers get at the beginning of the summer. And as you can see, it's got so many colors in it. And one of the things that you as um, graphic designers need to understand that when you go to screen printing, each color is a screen and there is a charge for each screen, which generally will run about 30 to $35. So if somebody is doing 100 shirts, let's say they're using this logo, they've got the blue, they've got the yellow, they've got an orange, they've got a red, a white, a green here, and I think there's, that's probably it. Yeah, there's seven colors. Seven colors. So we're talking about, before they even start their shirts, if they're, let's say they're just doing 100 shirts, a company is just doing 100 shirts, we're talking about an out-of-pocket cost to them of a little over $200. That's just for the setup. That's just for the setup. Then there's the, the, the run charge for the screen printing, the cost of the shirt, and this is on an ash shirt, so this, we only have seven setups. If this was on a navy blue shirt, we would have to have two white underlays. So we're talking about nine colors. Now in this particular case, Camp realizing this decided to go this way regardless. And only once did we do it in just a black outline. And this, we're talking about once in about 10 years because I've done everything for them for just about 10 years. This is the most effective. And they have made a decision over the years that they're going to stay with the full color. However, and I'll show you some other shirts, every year in the middle of the summer they have a, they, they have a weekend where parents come to visit their, their kids. And you can sign up for the next year, and I think that they save some money by doing that. And they give the kids a shirt that is indicative of the fact that they're coming back the following year. Up until this year, they have always wanted to do that shirt, or I have always advised them to do that shirt in one or two colors. Because it's not a great amount of shirts. It's probably about 200 shirts, but they always pick a color, colored shirt, which is going to run them a little over $2 a shirt. And then they've got all their setups and everything, so it gets to be very expensive. This past summer, because of the economy, they did not expect as many kids to rejoin the, for, for the following year as they got, and they were short 50 shirts. Mm -hmm. And they called me and they said, we want to do 50 shirts. 50 shirts were so expensive that they came out to be 15 or $16 a shirt by the time we did what they needed to be done on those 50 shirts because it was about, in this particular case, it was about 10 or 12 cut screens. Because what you have to understand is CMYK doesn't really work that well in screen printing. So yes, we can use CMYK, but then red won't print, so we always have to have an extra red, um, red screen. And um, blue is a problem also, so we always have to have an extra blue screen. And maybe there's some shading in there, so there may be some other screens as well that we have, that we have to have. So what we ended up doing in this particular case, because they have done embroidery and we do have this logo ready for embroidery, is we ended up giving those extra students a hat, a campers a hat, that was embroidered and that worked, and that worked very, very well. Because 50 hats cost a lot less to do than the shirts. Even with embroidery? Yes, because they already had their logo digitized and it was just a run charge and on 50 hats, so let's say the hats were $3, cost them 3 bucks, and the embroidery probably, it's a big logo, a lot of stitches, um, the embroidery probably cost them another 3 So they got something that may even had a better perceived value yeah. than the shirt, and we just added on the, si on the side um, 2013. Now those who got the shirt were jealous. <laughs> well, they didn't even know because oh, those okay. were mailed because it didn't come to them until the end of the summer. And no, actually, what they did is everybody got a hat. They sent everybody a hat because they didn't want to run into, you know, a jealousy at the next summer when kids came. Where did you get that hat from? Where yeah. did you get that hat from? <laughs> now, they do have a hat, and I don't know at what point in the summer they give it to them, but this was a different hat. So this is a company that really understands the value of promotional items and so they're willing to spend money up to a point. 